is another disaster, Goliath. Oh, Davy. I sure am glad that God is there. God is there? God is there through the hands of the people who help after a disaster. Shouldn't we help? You're right, Goliath. Let's go ask the grown-ups to help, too. To see how you can help, contact Lutheran Disaster Response at elca.org slash disaster. in September. Again, this is the second edition for this September. And the breaking news is one killed, three injured in a shooting at a high school in Washington State Wednesday. Spokane, Washington, according to the Associated Press, officials say one person was killed and at least three others were shot when a gunman opened fire at a high school in Washington State. And Brian Schaefer, the Spokane Fire Department, told reporters that one person died in the shooting Wednesday morning at Freeman High School in Rockford, south of Spokane. Schaefer says the threat has been eliminated at the high school. And Spokane School said that all schools in the district were, quote, being placed into modified lockdown as a precautionary measure. The schools are no longer on lockdown and no other information was available immediately. And um, in other news, McDonald's had an employee who gave birth at the restaurant and was a cashier and then tried to flush the newborn baby down the toilet inside the Redwood City restaurant, said prosecutor Sarah Lochner was working at the McDonald's on Chestnut Street on the evening of September 4th when she complained of stomach pain. According to the San Mateo County District Attorney's Office, during her night shift, prosecutors said the 25-year-old Redwood Sea woman visited the restaurant's bathroom multiple times to the concern of a co-worker. And when the co-worker entered the bathroom to check on Wagner, prosecutors said there was blood on the floor. Wagner tried to dismiss it and blamed it on a heavy period. But her behavior drew the attention of a second co-worker who also decided to check in on her. And second employee walked into a bathroom, peered in her stall, and saw a newborn baby that she had. That's just terrible. That's, that's just... Uh, in other news, uh, teen lovers who tried to elope were electrocuted by their family. Boy, this is just getting worse and worse, isn't it? Well, in other news, um, the, uh, um, the hurricane has hit Florida and um, looters have been looting and other problems in Florida. 
And uh, Apple Computer has launched a $999 iPhone X. Now, according to the Miami Herald, Hurricane Irma's powerful winds swirled through 14 businesses and uh, Junction Lofts building in Miami's Little River District and file cabinets were overturned, pictures were ripped off walls, and papers were strewn about, according to them. And they say it wasn't Irma, but it was thieves armed with a sledgehammer that was powerful enough to tear through metal doors that were supposed to keep the building safe from hurricane force winds. Boy. So it wasn't the hurricane, but it was looters. Uh, Stuart Jordan, who owns Edge Orthopedics and Junction Loft, said, once inside, the thieves stole everything they could, then decided to make a mess of it. There's a special place in hell for people like that, quote, unquote, he said, Joy Fowler works for the building's lander, landlord Stevens Cravallis. She says, as soon as it got dark out, the thieves smashed their way into the building and wiped out each business, and the tenants are mortified, she said. Fowler said Miami police had already seen the damage at 7151 Northeast 2nd Avenue and that the tenants were contacting insurance adjusters. She also said the company that owned the building would now hire a security company to protect it. There had been lots of break-ins in the past, Fowler said, but nothing comparable to the damage done Sunday night. It's not unusual for break-ins during big storms when unmanned businesses and shattered empty homes can be easy pickings for criminals. Also ransacked during the storm were two Foot Locker stores, one in Fort Lauderdale and another in Midtown Miami. Miami police arrested accused looters at the shops at Midtown, Miami on September 10th, 2017. So, Hurricane Jose, they're reporting, according to AccuWeather, is forecast to at least touch possibly the east coast of West Virginia or Vir no, no, Virginia possibly. They aren't sure yet. It might not, but it's possible. Hurricane Jose now is, um, well, uh, how about we, we take a break and uh, you're watching News View on Channel 6. Afghanistan, in Bolivia, in Ethiopia, in India, in Malaysia, in Nigeria, in Pakistan, South Korea, Thailand. Word 
make this piece. If you want to make it more than just a word, write the Peace Corps. Six dead, over 100 evacuated from Hollywood, Florida, nursing home left without power from Hurricane Irma. Six people died in a nursing home in Hollywood, Florida that was left without air conditioning after Hurricane Irma knocked out the power. Police evacuated about 100 residents Wednesday from the Hollywood Hills nursing home, according to the Sun Sentinel. And Florida is having a heat wave is one reason things are so bad there after all this. And Eastern Pacific tropical systems are to aim Mexico this week. Possibly two systems are heading for Mexico Wednesday morning local time. Tropical Depression 16E formed on the south side of Mexico. This system will continue to track slowly northeastward towards the coast over the next few days. There's a slight chance it could become a tropical storm before making landfall, said AccuWeather meteorologist Steve D. Travis. This chance would increase if 16E were to slow down and spend more time away from land. Also, Typhoon Talam sideswipes eastern China and aims for Japan with damaging winds and flooding. According to AccuWeather, Talium is expected by Sunday to hit Sapporo. It's going to pass by the uh, through the tip of South Korea, possibly. Uh, some places in its path are Kimamoto, Hiroshima, and Tokyo before it reaches Sapporo and other places beyond. Given the forecast track, the most significant impacts from Talium are expected to be, to be across southern Japan, said Doughty, who... Um, is um, and this is from Courtney Spammer, AccuWeather meteorologist. The storms are causing widespread damage through Japan right now. Talium, which became a typhoon earlier this week, swept just into the eastern part of Taiwan, bringing just a few higher gusts and showers to the island. And Hurricane Jose might hit the east coast of America soon. Currently a Category 1 hurricane is churning about 500 miles to the east-northeast of the Bahamas. Expect it to fluctuate. It could hit actually North Carolina, they're saying. It could possibly uh, affect Bermuda, but we don't know where it will track yet. Dangerous seas will be stirred along the north and east facing beaches of the Leeward Islands the British and U.S., Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, and the Turks and Calicos. Steering winds will diminish in the vicinity of Jose and lead to a few scenarios for the path of the storm. Jose could remain at sea and pose no direct threat to land. In this See scenario, the northeastern states will be in for an extended pe period of sunny and warm weather. We're not sure if it will go out to sea yet or towards the coast, for sure. 
The strength and frequency of rip currents will increase at a time when many lifeguards are no longer on duty and people may head to the beach to take advantage of warmer weather. And Hurricane Irma cut power to record number of Florida residents and restaurants this, um, I think that's what it says here, 18,000 plus workers are restoring power every hour, every day, said the FPL. We have the largest restoration workforce in the U.S. history responding to the worst storm in our company's history, said the power company. Our crews are out restoring power, and every hour of every day, more and more people are getting their lights back, Slaggy said. Much of the electric system in southwestern Florida will require a complete rebuild after the storm. Alexon sent more than 1,800 employees and contractors from its six utilities to assist in the massive power restoration effort. Exelon also donated an additional, additional $100,000 for Harvey and Irma itself, which brings the total to $450,000. $100,000, according to a news release. A Tutsville family of eight and their two dogs were treated for carbon monoxide poisoning after keeping their generator inside a closed garage, according to Titusville officials. Twenty more people, including five children, were taken to area hospitals Tuesday morning after a hazmat situation as a precaution because of the threat of carbon monoxide poisoning doing to the prox due to the proximity of a generator, according to the Blountness Springs Fire Rescue. One person died and three more people were treated for carbon monoxide poisoning from a generator inside a home, according to the Daytona Beach Fire Department. Harvey Irma damages predicted to cost $290 billion. Atlantic hurricane season is only at midpoint, according to AccuWeather. And Apple Computer has launched a $999 iPhone X in a bid to regain the innovation lead. Tuesday, they rolled out their much-anticipated iPhone X, a glass and stainless steel device with an edge-to-edge -edge display that Chief Executive Tim Cook called, quote, the biggest leap forward since the original iPhone. The launch contained few surprises with leaked details on the phone and other products, including an updated Apple Watch proving largely accurate. But the iPhone X's $999 price still raised eyebrows, and now its November 3 shipping date prompted questions about possibly supply constraints ahead of the holiday season. Well, this is News View. I'm Michael Badger. Have a good evening. Stay tuned for weather. Teenager Ashley Taylor learned about car accidents involving power lines during a high school program. She learned the steps to take to stay safe, but never dreamed her knowledge would be put to the test. She was riding with friends a few nights later when their car hit a power pole and brought down live power lines. I could have lost my life that night just knowing that like I had so many plans after high school and stuff like all of that was just running through my mind and stuff. I feel like I'm the luckiest person living. Just the 
it happened so quick after we learned all about it and that we actually got to use that information to save each other's lives and oh yeah really lucky would you know how to survive such an accident stay inside the vehicle except when there's fire and know how to get out safely if you have to see ashley's story learn more about power line safety and care enough to share it with those you love visit safeelectricity.org something suspicious, but you don't want to get involved. It's nothing you think. Can you be sure? If you see something, say something. Report suspicious activity to local authorities. Tonight's weather is brought to you by the Weather Channel actually. Low of 65, Saturday 84 for the high, 66 the low, Sunday 82, Sunday night 63 with thunderstorms, Monday partly cloudy, 74 with a low of 62. This is Michael Badger. Have a good night.